Good morning. Welcome to the Virginia Living Museum. We're here this morning in the Holt Native Plant Conservatory doing a little bit of preparation for a native plant sale. We have two of these each year, one in the spring and one in the fall. Uh, the way that we begin air sales, we start off around December planting seeds from different native species, uh, putting them through a series of cold and warm stratification treatment to get them to germinate. Once they germinate they, and get large enough, we begin uh, picking them out of the trays, and putting them to, into small square pots to grow in and be ready for the plant sale. They grow between 150 and 200 species each year for our sale. Uh, it usually varies. Sometimes we have some similar plants, but there's, we always try to get some new things each year in introduce new things to our customers. This morning we're in here, we're picking a few plants out of the uh, seed trays and potting them up. We've got a lot of things in here ready to go outside. Soon we'll be moving them outside to start getting them hardened off and used to actually getting full sun versus broken up sun in the greenhouse. Amanda is bringing some late purple asters out of a flat. They've gotten large enough to go into this small flat of squares and they should be offered this spring in the plant sale. Some of the species we have this year, we've got some cardinal flower, which is a nice red lobelia. We have some Ohio Tradescantia. It's a spider wart. It has a nice blue flower to it. So we've, uh, we've got a question from Madeline Henry. Um, Silas asks, why do you sell plants? Uh, we sell plants as a fundraiser for the Virginia Living Museum. Uh, the reason that we sell native plants is because they're best suited to be planted in your yards. They are, uh, use less water, require less fertilization. They're better for our native species, provide better food sources. They're more recognized by the native animals around here. And they're also beautiful. And Rebecca Kaufman asks, are these all local plants? Uh, they're all native. Most of, the, of them are actually local to this area. We do offer a few species that are native to the U.S. but not necessarily to just to the state of Virginia. And many of these occur in multiple states and locations across the U.S. Uh, this, of course, these are some vegetables that we're using for our colonial garden this year. These are uh, heirloom plants that were actually brought over when they came and started planting in Jamestown. We have some tomatoes and some peppers in here. We've got a few varieties of grasses that we're getting ready for the plant sale. Here's some little blue stem. Here we have some seedlings of persimmon, which is a nice little uh, fruit tree. It's got edible fruit. They're usually not ripe until after the first frost when they get kind of a little bit mushy, but they have a nice flavor, kind of almost kind of citrusy in a way. Here we have one of the species of Monarda, which we'll be offering at the sale. This is spotted horse mint. We'll also be offering uh, bee balm as well as some wild bergamot. So Michelle Fox uh, Goodwin wants to know how long does it take for uh, some of these species to grow? Uh, it depends on the species. A lot of these right now have started these seedlings in these small squares have started just this winter in December. These pitcher plants right here, however, have been growing for almost four years now. And then of course there's also a Venus flytrap in there. These are very slow growing and take probably about seven years to get large enough to where they start blooming. But the majority of the perennials will actually bloom, if not their first year, by their second year.
And uh, Lorelai Gould asked, what plant does butterflies like but not fear? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Butterflies, most everything we have at the sale act as at least as a nectar plant for butterflies and of course other pollinator species. Uh, some of the plants that we offer are host plants for butterfly for different species of butterflies. Uh, milkweed, which is one of the host plants it is for the monarchs is deer resistant. But the thing with deer resistant plants are depending on the number of deer you have and what food is available, deer resistance is typically it's a kind of a resistance, but if they're hungry enough, if it's green, they will probably still go ahead and eat it. All right, here we have some nice azure blue sage, which is starting. These will be in the sale this year. We, Alyssa wants to know, do you use any of these plants in the tanks or exhibits at the VLM? Yes, uh, everything that we grow here, we grow for the sale as well as the grounds and the exhibits. And Grant Gregory wants to know, are you going to have pond plants this year? Uh, yes, we will. We have several different species. I know we have some arrow arum, we have some duck potato, some pickerel weed, horsetail. and some horsetail. Uh, these are some young bowman's root. They have a nice kind of delicate white flower on them. They like to grow in areas with competition from other plants in the roots, so they're actually really good under dry, wooded areas. Um, Lucas, age six, asks, what plants do butterflies not like? That's a good question. I'm not <laughs> sure that there, I'm sure there are some plants that butterflies don't like. They probably wouldn't like to fly into a pitcher plant or get caught by a Venus flytrap. Uh, here are some blue lobelias. This is a nice uh, blue spike. It's a good hummingbird plant. Uh, this is also deer resistant as well as all the lobelias because they are a little bit toxic to them. So typically they'll stay away from these. This is a variety of columbine. It's called Corbett. It's a yellow columbine. From blue. Gregory York, Ephraim wants to know how many plants you grow each year? thousands. <laughs> I don't really have an exact count of them. We're currently doing an inventory, but once you count them and get looking at all of them between what's in the greenhouses and what's outside, it's actually kind of mind boggling. What plants are you going to keep? Uh, we usually keep a small variety of what we grow each year to try to get seeds off of. And then there's certain plants that we're growing that we're trying to actually get enough of to where we can start selling them. For example, we have a endangered coneflower we've been working on trying to get enough propagated so we can actually start offering them out to the public in sales. These are some harebells, which have a nice kind of a bell-shaped drooping blue flower. Very pretty little plant. Lorelai Gould said, I missed a plant name, Blue... Oh, Bee, Blue Lobelia. It? This one is often also called Great or Giant Blue Lobelia. There's also a Downy Lobelia, which is also a blue. From Madeline Kenray, Silas wants to know, where do you get the seeds? Uh, as many of them as we can, we collect here off the grounds of the Virginia Living Museum. And then we purchase some through... Prairie Moon. And every now and then I actually have people bring me seeds that they've collected themselves out of the woods or out of their own yards. These are one of the liatris. These are called gay feather. There's several species. We also offer this year we'll have a dwarf variety of this, which is nice in borders and even works well in uh, fairy gardens if you're into planting yourself up a little fairy garden. From Mackenzie Medford Sickles, Hannah wants to know, what is your favorite plant? Oh, I love them all. I can't <laughs> say that I have a single favorite. Okay. Amanda, what's your favorite plant? My favorite plant is butterfly leaf, the orange asclepias. It's the prettiest, I think. Yeah, and orange is actually kind of a rare color to see yes.
And when those Travis Dances that are small bloom, this is the actual flower which they will have. There's several different species of Tradescantia. That's the Ohio, which is, tends to be more of a bluish tint of a flower. But there's also Virginia, which is taller and is a little bit more purple. We've got some stuff back here blooming. This is a nice, some people call it shad bush. It's a service berry. Has a large, a little larger than a blueberry. The flavor's kind of, maybe like a mix of a blueberry and a cranberry. It's tasty, they're blooming now, and they'll be, this summer, have some fruits on them. We've got a nice uh, vine here. This is Carolina jessamine, early blooming yellow. Works good if you plant it with uh, the red native honeysuckle. They look very good together and bloom at the same time. Alexis Brant Brantner wants to know, what is a good low maintenance house plant? Mother-in-law's tongue yeah. is definitely one. There's some actually on that rack right there. They kind of have a spiky, striped look to them. They do very well in low light, lack of water. Uh, some people call them snake plants. Some people call them mother-in-law's tongue. Where can I get, from William Allen Reed, where can I get the wood for a nice cedar bed raised garden here in Hampton Roads? Uh, I guess I'd look at lumber yards or possible home improvement stores. I'm not sure the best place to get that type of lumber. All right. All right, well, thank you for joining us at the Virginia Living Museum live Facebook session. Join us at 2.30 this afternoon. We will be diving in the CBA. Be sure to visit us virtually with all of our natural education here on Facebook and also on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. There is always complete updated information on our website, the VLM.org. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And please stay tuned and keep checking our website to see how we're going to work out things with our spring plant sale this year. And we hope to see you there.